Okay, what's going on? Uh, it's time to talk Pokemon again. But not Pokemon like a theory or anything like that or what I like or so on and so forth. It's time for kind of a review on, well, Pokemon carts. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, first off, just to get it out there, I don't think that it's that big of a deal, and I don't think that many people will even necessarily realize it, but the camera position has changed ever so slightly. There is a legitimate reason for why this happened. Uh, I decided to mount the speakers to the wall instead of them ha instead of them being on the desk. It's not much of a deal, but it changes the display just a little bit, and it'll change even more when I decide to buy the second monitor, which is just around the corner. It depends on on actually paying off part of the main computer and everything like that. I'm, of course, financing the computer. I'm paying so much to... I'm, I'm buying from Dell, yada yada, who cares? Um, anyways, while that's going on, the speakers went up, this monitor is going to move over. That will change the position of, a cam of the camera just a little bit more even after that, where after a while, this window is probably not going to be visible at all. It's going to move over that way. And when that happens, there's going to be a second monitor over there. And quite frankly, I'm looking forward to that big time because uh, trying to stream is difficult on a single monitor. It is. Uh, it's, it's more problem then it's worth. A second monitor over there would be exponentially helpful, especially for the way that we do the Super Sentai show. But today, that is not what I am here to talk about. That is not what I said I was coming on here to do. I said that we were going to talk about these here Pokemon games. Now, what is this? Well, I recently acquired a stack of Pokemon games. A literal entire stack of games. Bam. These are not the Pokemon games that we grew up with. They are, in fact, reproduction cards of the games that we grew up in. The games that play on this. On this old thing right here. In fact, you could play these on the original Game Boy, which I have, but this is the one that I happen to have sitting right next to me. And what is that? What is that right there? Why did I buy these? This is exactly why I bought these. I found a deal online that sold all of these games, and I paid about 60 bucks. Okay. I'm $60 down, and at $60 down, I have... A reproduction of blue, a reproduction of red, a reproduction of yellow, a reproduction of gold, a reproduction of silver, and a reproduction this one didn't even want to open, of crystal. And then lastly, a reproduction of green. This is what I bought that entire thing for. I didn't want to spend $60 necessarily, but I bought the whole pack for this game because I'd never played green. Now, I'm not the kind of person that's played these games enough to have the entire game memorized so that I can just run through it. And I didn't necessarily want to do it on an emulator. I could have. I could have easily downloaded this with some sort of, uh, with a patch or something like that and played it on an emulator. That was not my intent. I wanted to pick up this Game Boy, to pick up this game, to slide it down in here and I wanted to play green.
Look at all that reflection. That is a that's that's that old Game Boy life. Okay? This is what I wanted. This is 100% what I wanted. So, how did this work out for me? That's what I'm really wanting to talk about here. See, I invested in reproduction carts. Sometimes these work out really well, sometimes they don't. And here's the real kicker. When I was offered this opportunity, three things came to mind. One, I have Pokemon Red. I have Red, I have Yellow, I have Gold, I have Silver, I have Crystal. I don't have a copy of blue, and I don't have a copy of green. <laughs> this is fully translated. You can read it. You can play it. It's the original sprites. And it even has the awful, awful music. The screechy, shitty music that you hear when you play um, Lavender Town. This was an interesting experience. It was cool. But there is a problem with this thing here. When I was playing this, I noticed one, I noticed a couple significant problems. One, while the game works 100% and I was able to go through the entire game and I was able to see original sprites and I was able to hear some music that had originally been taken out and I was able to play the game with all of its bad... Uh, okay, guys, I like Pokemon. I am not a fanatic. I am not the kind of person that dives in and believes that these games are flawless. I'm not a quote Gen 1-er. These games have problems. The balancing in this, ga in this old, old game is bad. It's bad. It's frackin' bad. That's all there is to it. It takes way too long for certain things that you get on your team. Like if you if you don't pick that I if you don't pick Bulbasaur or Squirtle, if you pick Charmander, and don't give me that fucking hard easy mode. It's not a difficulty setting, it's a fucking starter. The balance of the game should have it designed so that you can find something on your way to Brock that can contend with Brock. In the original game, if you picked Charmander, I did not in this run, I did not, but had I done so, I was screwed. The guys that I found available to me in the green version, not a single one of them learned a single move that would have helped combat Brock all the way, I think I was like level 13 with every single guy when I got there. And not one person, not one guy had even one move that was actually strong versus Brock and his rock people. And I just threw that thing right on the floor and get it, got it. That's a problem. That is a legitimate problem that nobody ever seems to want to talk about. The balance in the original games is bad. It's bad. But I was able to play this game, and I was able to beat this game, and it was an interesting experience to go back and um, muscle through it again. And I do remember this mentality that I developed back when I was playing these games, and now I, now I remember why I developed the mentality. Just keep leveling up, keep level grinding, keep training, and eventually you'll be strong enough to whop through the game. You'll be there. you get there. It takes time, but you'll get there. That is not a good RPG design. RPGs should have a level of tactics built into the game to where you utilize your team properly and with a minimal amount of level grinding, you should be able to take the game. Level grinding makes areas easier, yes. But if you have your team set up properly and you have things at your disposal that make sense, plenty of healing potions, that's the reason you get the healing potions, plenty of money, you buy the proper armor, you should be able to go to each town, level grind enough to get the money, get the armor, when, all, when new armor, new weapons, new abilities are all in your possession, you should be able to go to the next area and you should be able to, to strategically move your way through that area without having to stop and go to the woods and level grind for four and a half hours. That is ridiculous. 
and it is not good game design. 100% it is not good game design. Good game design is not about making a game longer. It's not about making a game harder. It's about making sure that the tools are there to be able to play a game. And it doesn't just it doesn't just happen with electronic games. Sometimes board games are fucking broken and stupid and cheap too. It's just the nature of it. If something is designed bad, if there are flaws in it and you exploit those flaws or you have to do certain things in order, like that ridiculous amount of level grinding that is needed to deal with the first two gyms, that is ridiculous. You should have a person that is able to deal with Misty by the time you get to Misty. And quite frankly, if you picked Charizard, you know, because you're going for Charizard, if you pick Charmander, uh, there's a Pikachu in the woods, good luck. Uh, in this, in this version, in this version, to find Pikachu in the woods, um, I walked back and forth in the Viridian Forest for, I think it was about two and a half hours. Long enough that an entire Disney movie played. It's ridiculous. That is not the problem that I found with this game. If you're interested in this cart, here's what I'm going to tell you. When I went to the museum, I found a game-breaking problem. I get there. I've just done two hours of level grinding to get everybody to level 13. Then this little boy, where I'm going up to fight Brock, says, Hey, man, do you want to see the museum? And I was like, Hey, man, sure. Maybe the pictures are different. That intrigued me. Even if it was slightly different, I was intrigued to go see what the difference was until I got up there and then it was like, hey, here's the difference. The game crashes. It tries to bring up the screen, the little picture. When you go to look at like Aerodactyl with fossils or whatnot, it tries to bring up that picture. And when it does, it just goes to a white picture. Nothing forms inside that picture and the entire game freezes and crashes. And I was like, oh, well, shit. So I loaded the game back up and I went through another two hours of level grinding, walking back and forth in the grass to get my guys up to level 13 tediously, saved it this time, and then went back to the museum and it crashed again. I loaded it, went back to the museum, and my rule of three, I tried it one more time on a different picture to see if it was just that one spot. If you touch an exhibit inside the museum, this game crashes. That scared me at that point, because I didn't know if the rest of the game was going to start doing that to me. Luckily, it did not. I went on the St. Anne, I did all my stuff, I beat this whole game, it didn't bother me after that point. Um, there's a slight strange glitch when you take damage. Um, I don't know why, but the life bar seems to screw up. Like, it, uh, you, you get hit, it all of a sudden takes you back to full life, and then takes you back down to where you should be in life. So, if you have, like, if your total hit points is, like, 15, and then somebody hits you, and you're already at, like, 12, and somebody hits you for 4, and you're supposed to drop to 8... It'll, the bar will jerk, take you back to 15, and then go back down to 8 immediately. Uh, it doesn't save your life if you're going to get, like, KO'd or whatever. You still get KO'd. I don't know what the glitch was. It was basically a visual glitch. It didn't cause any actual problems. My phone. It didn't cause any actual problems in terms of playing and beating the game. That is what I have to say on green. It was interesting experience. It was cool to own it. And quite frankly, it was playable. You'll deal with a couple of little glitches. The game is old, and it comes with all the old problems that the original game came with. And, if you try to go to the museum, the game is over. However, it was cool to do things like Victory Road and the cave at the end, the Cerulean Cave at the end of the game. Those were different. They were not laid out the same that it was when I played it years ago on Red and Blue. They were different. Uh, it, it was noticeably different that I could not find my way around the same easily, as easily as I had before. And I came across that a couple of times where I thought I was imagining it until I got to those two places in general, and they were not the same. They were 100% not the same. I knew, I knew something was wrong. This blue game worked 100% perfectly, as if I was holding the original card. 
It gave me no problems whatsoever, which is cool because now I have a blue version. This red game gave me no problems whatsoever. It worked 100% of the time and did not seem to have any glitches whatsoever of any kind. This yellow game worked 100% all the way, no issues of any kind. They all save. Of course they save, I was able to beat the games. Then I got to these. While I have a yellow and a red and they both still save, so I didn't really need these. These just kind of come out as extra games, and this is cool to kind of have, whether it's real or not. It's a physical game that I can take somewhere and play, and this, I at least finally got the chance to play play it, even if it was buggy and a little, a little pain in the ass because I experienced a couple problems. One, I was going back to Pokemon after being away for a very long time that I had not played Gen 1 in a very long time. Uh, you notice the problems when you go back like that. Well... First off, these three here, their carts are not the same as these. These are more than passable. They're vibrant and everything, and they work out. This is kind of a weak gold color. It's weak. It's not It's not wonderful. It's, uh, it's just kind of, uh, I don't know. It, it didn't grab me. This is a regular Game Boy cart with the sticker on it. It's not silver. And this is also kind of weak. Uh, it's fine. I mean, it's see-through. It's kind of neat, but it's not, uh, it's not, it's not the actual crystal version. Can we get this camera back? I can't get it to focus. Whatever. We're almost done here anyway. I experienced only one problem with these three games. One problem with all three of these games. There, fixed it. I didn't, I was, it was driving me crazy to be so damn blurry. I experienced one problem with these three games and only one major problem with all three of them. They save, which is wonderful because both my silver and gold do not save anymore. I realize I could fix it with a battery, but I also run the risk of damaging it when I try to do that and... Uh, I've done something like that before. I replaced one game battery a while back in a different cart, and uh, it worked, so I'm sure I could do it, but mm -hmm. the opportunity was here to replace the games, basically. So I took that opportunity. There's one problem. These games play. These games save. But the clock works only on in-game time. If you start silver or gold or crystal on these repro cards, the clock that you set at the start of the game will work and function perfectly, except that it will only work and function in real game time. This means that if you leave and you turn the game off, you you stop playing around 8 o'clock at night, and then you get on at about 11 in the morning or whatever. It is still 8 o'clock at night in that game. This was the only problem I encountered. Um, it made the game slightly interesting as I played through, which I only did for silver, but... It meant that I had to pass real time in the game. So as I was walking around and I played the game... Uh, the totality of only about, like, two days went by. Uh, it took me, like, I think 40... Well, I think it was around... I think it was around 43 hours is when I beat the game, this run-through. I was running around and catching things and doing stuff and kind of getting into it. And it took me about 43 hours to run the entirety of what I was doing, which means that in the course of the time that I played... Since I was playing in real time and my kid never slept, uh, for two straight days he just kind of ran the marathon on the Pokemon life. And uh, I watched time change in-game as I played. It was not a thing where I could turn it off and come back. Now I did try something in gold which kind of worked, but it was cheap and I didn't finish gold. I started the game, played it. 
and then after I got the fly command or whatever, what I started doing was each time I turned the game on, I would fly back home and like set the clock. I mean, it, it worked, but yeah. So that's all I wanted to say. I wanted to say that I bought an entire set of reproduction carts, and though I had problems with them, this was an interesting $60 drop. And in all honesty, it may have very well been worth it, even for the fact that they don't feel original. Uh, the green does not feel original, and the silver, gold, and crystal do not necessarily feel original because of those little glitch problems. But these three games were perfectly worth it. These games worked perfectly. Say what you will, but I was asked about them, and I said that I would come in here and talk about them. A friend of mine asked me what the reproduction carts were actually like, and that was my experience playing through each and every one of these on original hardware, which was my intent with all of this, was that it was going to be really cool to play on this Game Boy again. And for the nostalgic principle, if nothing else, it was neat just to sit down in the living room on my chair and put my feet up and play my old Game Boy and uh, fight with lighting. <laughs> Catch you later. I have spoken. Take what you will from it. <laughs>